Now, Canadian Blitz Services says that the summer season often translates into a higher number of accidents on the road with a greater potential of injuries requiring blood transfusions. It can take up to 50 donors to help save someone who has been in a motor vehicle accident. More than half of all Canadians will either need blood themselves or will know someone that does. I mean, that's pretty easy to believe considering. So it's Josh McEwen here with Dufferin News, and I'm here to talk to you about the blood drives that are happening here in Dufferin in August. Now, Canadian Blood Services uh, is having a blood drive or two blood drives in Dufferin, um, one in Shelburne, one in Orangeville, next month, which is August. And for these, you have to book ahead. Now, in the summer, I mean, there's always a need for more blood donations, but in the summer, there's lots of car accidents, which we've seen lately, it seems like. There's at least a few a week now, um, which is very unfortunate and sad. So events here are in Shelburne and in Orangeville in August, and you book on blood.ca. Shelburne's donation event takes place on Friday, August 14th at Center Dufferin Recreation Complex, located at 200 Fiddle Park Lane from 2.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. The Orangeville event takes place on Monday, August 24th at the Best Western Plus in Suites, located at 7 Bonavista Drive from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. You can book your appointment on blood.ca, and it's pretty easy. You just check out. You can check out the eligibility quiz to see, make sure that you're okay, and uh, then you book from there. While they need all blood types, O negative blood is the one that's universal with all other blood types. So if you have this, it'd be great if you could donate. Um, but of course, not everyone is eligible, but it's always good to check if you can donate. And again, you do all the booking on blood.ca. Now, there's another thing I want to talk about, which is Ontario's reducing the restrictions when it comes to the visitation rules for long-term care facilities. Um, and some of these have already taken place, and some of them will change on July 22nd. The first one that's already taken place is up to two people at a time can visit a loved one outdoors. This used to be, it was only one person, and they used to actually have to show that they've uh, taken a COVID test in the previous two weeks, or at least verbally attest to taking one. Um, and this was for every visit, you'd have to uh, have to say that you've taken a, a COVID test uh, within the previous two weeks. Uh, now you don't, don't have to do that for the outside visits. Um, now it's two people and you don't have to have the test anymore. But now they're going to start letting indoor visits happen as of July 22nd. Although I imagine this might depend on the facility, so it's good to check ahead to make sure it's okay. And this will also have a two-person per- limit. And these visitors will have to verbally attest that they've had a negative result on a COVID-19 test taken within the previous two weeks. And the way it works with masks in this whole situation is that when you're outside, you have to provide your own face covering. But when you're indoors, you have to wear surgical or procedure masks. Um, And the homes are expected to supply these. So, I mean, maybe it's best you don't go inside unless it's necessary. I mean, it, it's always good to go check in, because especially if you haven't been in for a few months, just to see how everything's going. But it's good to check. It, again, it's best not to waste the resources of long-term care facilities, especially the county ones. I mean, Dufferin Oaks is a great facility, and we want them to spend the money where where it's best used. Um but regardless, it's, a, it's everyone's choice, and it's good to always just check on to make sure whatever's going on. But regardless, when you go inside, visitors are required to pass a screening questionnaire. So the way it goes, again, just to recap, is that no matter what, you can have up to two visitors. And if you're outdoors, you have to supply your own mask, and you don't have to have taken a COVID t- test in the last two weeks. But if you're going indoors, which is permitted as of July 22nd, uh, you have to use a mask that's provided by the care facility and you have to verbally attest that you've uh, you've had a negative result on a COVID-19 test within the previous two weeks. And then also have to go through a screening questionnaire. And that might also apply for visiting outside as well. Now, just again, for their blood donation events, uh, just to recap, Shelburne is on Friday, August 14th from 2.30 to 6.30 p.m. at the Center Dufferin Recreation Complex located at 200 Fiddle Park Lane. And Orangeville's is on Monday, August 24th, 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Best Western Plus Inn and Suites, located at 7 Buena Vista Drive. And you book your appointment on blood.ca. Again, book your appointment just to make sure everything's safe because, again, social distancing and everything else, you don't want to have crowds. Anyways, thank you so much for listening. This is Josh McEwen, Duffer News. And until next time, have a great one.